I would like to call to order the Monday, April 18th meeting of the City of Monona Finance and Personnel Committee. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alder Wood? Here. Alder Thomas? Here. Mayor O'Connor? Here. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 4th meeting? So moved. So moved. Any corrections Second. or additions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. First item under new business 6A, consideration of resolution 22-4-2563, authorizing the issuance and sale of $3.4 million in taxable general obligation refunding bonds, series 2022C. Is there a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. Uh, Mark? Is, yeah, Jeff is here to present. OK. okay. Um, so this first one is, there's two of them tonight. This first one is authorizing, we have a, a band that's up for refinancing, so we're refinancing to a long-term note. And it's a, considered a taxable note. Okay, and Jeff, did you have something to add to that about the first one? Uh, no, I just wanted to kind of take you through the, the yields, the pricing that we okay. had received for you today. Um, also, congratulate you once again on maintaining that incredible double A plus rating that you have. I think Mark and his staff for all the effort that he put into what goes into securing that rating each time we go into the market. So, um, well done to be commended. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, That's good news. Pretty proud of that, yeah, actually. So, we have two issues one's taxable, one's, one's exempt. The first issue is a refunding of uh, taxable uh, note anticipation note that was done for kid number nine some time ago. Uh, and we're taking that out uh, against the revenues uh, of the uh, of the TID. So we fully anticipate that these will be 100% amortized by incremental revenues from the development in that particular TIF district. So again, they're taxable because of course, IRS says it originally had benefited a for-profit we, of course, had some very good um, developer agreements in place, uh, which you exercised and which gave us some guarantees in terms of actual development. And it's one of the reasons we're so quickly in a position now to take these out longer term. Uh, if you take a look at the taxable yields, I, I passed a sheet out for everyone. Um, you see the par amount is four, or $3,405,000. We were pretty close in our estimate at 3400 um, we have a price of three million three hundred twenty-five thousand four forty, and a true interest cost of all costs in of a four point two seven percent. You look below, and you'll see that the yields beginning in two thousand twenty-three are two sixty-five, and out in two thirty-five they reach a four thirty-five. Now these are yields we haven't seen in a few years, uh, unfortunately. Not a lot of tremendous news to tell you about the municipal marketplace in the last quarter. Um, I can pretty much tell you that based on the last three months, today's going to be better than tomorrow. And yesterday it was a little bit better than today in terms of, and we're talking two, three basis points a day. I uh, talked to the underwriters today and it sounds like uh, MMD, which is municipal market data, which keeps records of all the sales in the country for a particular day, all the municipal sales probably going to move another five basis points, or probably did it this afternoon, moved another five basis points, and not in a favorable direction. So, um, But all in all, still not a terrible rate uh, when you're looking at taxable at 4.27. For those of us who've been around, um, uh, when we did the Garden Circle issue, uh, we had rates close to 8% taxable when we first went into that particular issue. and. Thank goodness the market changed. We've refinanced, got ourselves out of those rates, and dropped them down under 4% for, for those particular rates. So it just wanted to give you some kind of an idea where we've been. Uh, and I think we started Garden Circle in 2008, if my memory serves me well, but um, somewhere around then, I, I think. So happy to answer any other questions that you might have. Uh, this pretty much closes us out for the debt service that uh, was borrowed for the development of TID 9. Now that's not saying there won't be you know, additional improvements and stuff that come in because we do have, sort of, of course, some benefited property that's available for development there. Okay, anybody have any questions? 
Uh, Alderwood? Just a technical question, because the resolution uses 3,400,000 even, but this says 300, 300, 3,405,000. Yeah. So do we need to amend? Probably should amend. I would amend that. Yes. Then I'll move to amend everywhere it says 3,400,000 and change that to 3,405,000. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor on the amendment say aye. 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 Any further discussion on the original? Okay, then all in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Is that a roll call? Oh, it probably is a roll call. Yeah. Sorry, would the clerk please call the roll? Alder Thomas. Alder Thomas? We're calling yes. the roll. Aye. Alder Wood? Aye. Motion passes. Eventually I'll get this. Um, item 6B, consideration of resolution 22-4-2564, authorizing the issuance and sale of $6 million in general obligation promissory notes, series 2022B. Is there a motion to approve this? Move to approve. Second. Mr. Bullen, or Mark, did you want to say This is just our general capital borrowing and with the additional $2 million uh, that we talked about last time. Jeff, did you have something? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, as Mark said, this is um, our um, annual CIP. Um, at the last minute, of course, we decided to throw in two, uh, two million to um, take care of a payment that's coming due on an issue that um, we have in place, tax exempt issue for some green space and park space, which is ultimately uh, to be determined by city council. Um, with that, we shuffled around uh, a few things, made some changes, and and uh, got you into the market with this issue. Again, you can see it's tax exempt. There's going to be a premium paid of $72,379. Mark will diligently use that toward the uh, first payment this fall uh, of interest. and. You will take a look at the true interest cost, the TIC, of 3.17%. So, um, all in all, not too terrible, uh, but last year I think we had a 219. Of course, it's not, we're not comparing exactly apples to apples because they weren't the same par amounts, but it gives you some kind of an idea as to where yields have gone. Uh, you take a look at 2023 and the tax exempt yield at a 212. And uh, that compares to our taxable of 265. So, you know, you're talking about 40, 53 basis points difference there. But if you go down to 32, 2032, we're looking at a 296 versus a four. So that's 104 basis points differential in, in that year. So as you would expect, um, uh, taxables out longer term are, are not performing quite as well as they had in the past. For only interest sake I looked at a previous taxable issue that we had done and in the first year we uh, we had a yield of a 0.45 which is hard for me to believe it <laughs> taxable and, a, and it was almost flat I think we were a 109 out in the 10th year and those were taxable rates so we do have some pretty impressive rates yeah. locked in um, that's a good thing most of our debt is well under 3% that's good so it'll be a while before we'll be refinancing that yeah, well, I'm glad we have it in place, Mayor, where we do. Yeah. Right. Any questions? No? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. Oh, oh I'm sorry, again. Aye. Will the clerk please call the roll. Alder Wood? Aye. Alder Thomas? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Bill. <coughs> Uh, next, item 6C, convene, convene in closed session under Wisconsin statute section 19.85, paren 1, paren G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. This is pertaining to the claims of Hernandez Martinez, Jim McCarthy, Groth Roller, Groth, and Nimmer. Uh, is there a motion to go into closed session? So I'll move. Second. Will the clerk please call the roll? Alder Thomas. 
Aye. Alder Wood? Aye. We are in closed session. Okay, uh, we are in open session. Um, under the first item E, consideration of claim of Rosa Hernandez Martinez. Uh, I would move that we pay the claim in the amount of $456.77. Yes. Yeah. Now second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item F, consideration of claim of Jennifer Jen Andrew McCarthy. Move to deny. Second. Any further discussion? No, it's just based on that discussion in closed session. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item G, consideration of claim of Dan Groth and Sarah Roller Groth. Move to deny. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And finally, item H, consideration of claim of Carol Nimmer and Terry Nimmer. Move to deny. Move to deny. Second. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Moving on to review and approval of city administrator recruitment materials. We're hoping to um, open up um, the position for applications within the next week or so, I think, but we wanted to bring it to find the paperwork um, to finance and personnel, the ad and the job description, and then Leah has put together a very nice brochure. Yeah. Um, so if we just would like to let you guys take a look at it, and if you have any comments or suggestions you'd like to hear them i had a question i guess on the job description is that <clears throat> the same as what we used during the last recruitment it's going to get changed a little bit maybe but not much right nothing nothing to yeah and then the brochure i was looked really nice and uh i know it's you know very up to date referencing of course the San Damiano project so yeah and Madam Mayor I just again want to put a plug to some of the things that we've learned going through our process with Nehemiah um, Lee and I had an opportunity to meet with Harry Hawkins from Nehemiah during the kind of the start of our uh, contract with him about a you know, year and a half two years ago now uh, and one of the things that we talked about with Harry was some HR practices and this is specifically one of the things that we talked about is when we have these kind of higher level department head level or higher um, positions that we look at doing job brochures like this rather than just a you know one page posting that you put um, up on the website you do the brochure to kind of showcase the culture of the community which helps recruit a much diverse and wider pool of applicants so you know our hope is that when we fortunately uh, we don't have a lot of these opening but when we do uh, we can use the brochure as a means to get the the message of what known is and what it stands for out to a lot of larger audience than just a you know one page that you throw up on the website or, or a newspaper ad. I think it does a nice job of that. Do you have any other I th we also included a uh, salary survey. Right. And, and you can see the, the salary range that, that's in the brochure that's the range we're going with or what you're proposing 110 to 130 yeah yes okay. you can see we're a little low right now so yeah in comparison but much better than we were three months ago so. any other questions or comments Kathy do you have anything well no I just um because I don't have it in front of me right now um because I can't double screen stuff um, in terms of where we promote the, um, the job, the position, I mean, I'm assuming they will, we will go into the, the um, Hispanic and, the, um, and all of the minority um, local newspapers or media to um, recruit as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think, well, you know, we learned a lot also with the cheap searches and learn some other places to post things and 
Yeah, so just a couple of comments on that. Yes, there are a number of avenues that we've used for a couple of different recruitments over the last six months um, that we'll continue to use uh, for, for this search. And there's a number of professional organizations um, that are made up of memberships of, of different uh, groups of people in the public management and public administration profession um, that we'll make sure that this gets put out in as well. So hopefully we will cover a wide selection of and, sites. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? No. Uh, well, when would this get posted then? We think it may be a week I, from I, I do have one question. With, okay. does, does the brochure assure us that we will get candidates that are as good as Brian? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's, he's going to promise to come back if we don't. So. <laughs> okay. So, Leah, do you think maybe like a week from Monday or something? Sure, yeah. Probably. And I think we were thinking hold them open till June 6th. June 6th or it should be the, what, the Monday after uh, Memorial Day. So I'm hopeful being this time of year that we'll get a, a good response. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, we will move on to uh, the presentation of the Monona Fire Department annual report. And Did you want a motion on that? We, I, sure. we can take one if you'd like. Um, okay. Is there a motion to uh, approve the? I'll move to approve. <coughs> oh. Kathy went. <laughs> I, lost. I will second, <laughs> if that's okay. Can I second since she's left the room? Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Chief McMullen. Well, good evening. We're going to see evening. if the presentation works. They may need to help me with that, but uh, I'll hand this off first. So you can start looking at it when we get the presentation set up. Thank you. Thank you. I made sure they make enough copies for everybody, and here's enough for the rest of the city council. Okay, great. The past of this meeting. So we'll see if this uh, actually works or not. If not, I can talk just fine. Uh, works. Wow. Success. Very impressive. Well, I'm, I consider this a victory. Yeah. So, uh, this is a very short presentation. Uh, it's literally just a general outline of where I'm going with future staffing needs over the next couple of years. Uh, I want to make sure there's no surprises. I'm a big fan of transparency. Uh, I had a meeting with the mayor three weeks ago, somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah, something like Time that. Time flies. Yeah. Um, but what I'm looking at right now, um, this first slide you can see, for those of you that don't know, what our staff does is we have three full-time staff authorized per day. So we have two on the ambulance, one on the engine when we have that extra person. But what this graph is, is Medic 60 alone. So just Medic 60, just last year, responded to 1,400 calls. By Medic themselves. 60 is the ambulance, the is ambulance. that correct? Because we're, we do both fire and EMS, so they respond to everything. What this graph doesn't show is the 480 calls that were either missed by them or we didn't backfill because they were already on another call and we had a fire alarm call or something come in. So all told, that one unit was dispatched 1,800 times last year. So when you say missed, somebody else covered the call. Yeah, so either Madison comes in with, if it's an EMS call, if it's a fire alarm call, a lot of times we don't backfill with another ambulance. Since ours does double duty, they respond as a fire department unit instead of an ambulance in those calls. I'm not going to pull somebody else's ambulance to, to come set out a fire alarm. So, but when you add all the missed calls up, the, the calls that we didn't backfill, Medic 60 was dispatched a little over 1,800 calls last year. Could you, so by backfill, are you saying you still sent a truck but not the ambulance? Correct. Okay, so, so it's not that time, nobody went. Correct. So okay. we always have a response of, of some okay. sort. So when you look at calls like this, the, the general standard that we go by just by EMS calls is about 1,250 calls a year. Once you hit that point, you need to start figuring a second rig to be brought into service. Um, just in Dane County, I can give you three examples of recent where people hit that number and they start working on the second ambulance. 
Uh, once you add two, you're up to 3,000 or 3,500 calls before you have to add a third. There's a, a bit of scale of economy. So, as you can see, projection-wise, based on call volume already this year, we're, hit, we're up uh, almost 20% in call volume just this year. So, we're going to hit probably close to 2,000 calls uh, just for the, the one unit being dispatched. So, when I say a call, what I'm talking about is when my medic unit gets dispatched, from the comm center. So by the time they get out the door, they get to the scene, they make patient contact, they get the patient loaded, they take them to the hospital, and they clear the hospital, that's an average of 51 minutes per call. We're lucky our hospitals are close. Um, I can tell you outside agencies, it's an hour and a half to two hours. What it doesn't account for in the documentation they provide is the amount of time it takes to document that call when they come back. They restock, they clean, and they have to do the documentation that generates revenue for us. That particular instance is about 45 minutes a call. Uh, what was funny 20 years ago was a, like a refusal. You go and you don't transport somebody, and you would type up three lines and say, hey, they showed up, they didn't want to go to the hospital, and we returned. Those actually take more documentation now than before because of cohorts of our wonderful attorney. Lots of lawsuits. Um, <laughs> we have to document better now for people we don't transport than for people we actually transport because of lawsuits. So. Just the numbers from last year, um, we're at 10 hours out of the day just for EMS calls based on the average last year for Medic 60. So what that ambulance also does beyond EMS calls, which is the bulk of what they do, all of our folks that are required to do inspections, they're all required to do PR events, they're all required to do training, they're all required to do um, fitness, we require them to actually work out during the day so they don't keel over on a call for us. So what we're looking at right now, when I do a, a utilization of our rigs, we're over 50% on a, on a 24 hour time period. They're busy 12 hours out of the day uh, already. So what you're not seeing with those numbers, that doesn't show you, I say, all the missed calls. So when you have missed calls or calls where we didn't backfill, that's not part of the numbers that I have up there. So again, when you add all that back in, we're at a little over 1,800 calls last year, so we ended up with 1,824. So Medic 60 is dispatched to all of those because that's the rig we know we have in service 24-7. We may have somebody on the engine. We may not have somebody on the engine. So that medic unit goes on everything. But for every call that we go up on average, it takes two hours out of my, out of my SAS day. So if I, right now we're running 5.9 calls a day on average since the beginning of the year. That's up almost two calls a, a day since last year. We were in 3.82. So that's why the, the first slide shows a 20% increase. We're, our numbers are high. So, okay, told you, eight slides, I'm almost done. I've got three <laughs> slides left. So again, I also acknowledge, I know Chief Cheney Austin is, oh, we're a small city. I get the resource issues. I understand that we're limited on what we can do and how we can do it and when we can do it. We get all of that. Uh, so I'm working on starting to develop some staffing plans. Some are short term, some are long term, but based on how we can best add staffing without impacting the city's levy. Can we do it completely? We cannot. I can all be very upfront. We cannot do it. There will be an impact on the operating levy at some point. It's a matter of how much can we mitigate uh, as part of what we do. This is a slide just based on the concept ideas of, of apartments and stuff that I know that are coming. You're talking another 1,000, 1,200, 1,400 people. If all these come to fruition, some of them may not, some may be downsized. But when I look at concepts, that's a lot of people to add to a call volume of already 1,800 calls. That's a lot of calls. So, last two slides. See, I said three, I've been four. There's one more after this that I added last minute. So this is just giving you a heads up. In the next month or two, I'll be coming to you with a proposal to hire somebody basically to start mid-year as a 10th person, a flex person, to help cover the days that we're already, we know we're going to be short and to help provide more daytime staffing. Because uh, how many of you remember the call we had two weeks ago out of the Beltline with the two PNBs and the car accident at Highway 51? I had four people on that call. That's it. I had four people. Two of them on the angels and two on the engine. That's all I had working on the belt line with two dead patients, one on each side of the highway. My crew did great. They split, they each took one, 
and they worked it until we had Did a we mutual aid there too. Yep, we had medic 14 come out and Patrona sent a medic as well. And we ended up having a squad come up from McFarland because we just didn't have the staff. We're getting more and more calls like that. I've been out, I was covering the ambulance last week because I apologize, I ran out of the Nima Haya group stuff that we had um, last week. Um, we were out on the belt line twice that day. And as they get the flex line up, opened up, it's just going to get worse. There's just no getting, getting better out there. So I'm looking to hire a tent. Um, if you look at our numbers, 80% of our calls happen between basically the 12 hours of the daytime hours. So we're looking to add additional staffing during the day, uh, but also to help cover some of the, the days that we know we're going to be short. Um, other short-term stuff that I'm going to do is just start providing you guys a bunch of data. Here's why. The tenth person, I can give you the data right now. I can show you the data, why it's needed, what we're going to do with that person, how we're going to pay for that person. I can do all of that, which will probably come next month. I want to give everybody a heads up. This is, this is coming. Um, that position we should be able to mitigate pretty easily. Long term, more staff. Everybody always wants more staff. I get it. Um, but what I need to present to you folks is not just full-time staff. We're a combination department. So we're going to have to do work to update the POP program. It's going to cost more money. Uh, we need to do work. Uh, we're looking at an intern program. Once the new public safety building comes to fruition, We'll work on implementing that. That provides some supplemental staffing at a low cost, similar to what we have currently with our POP program. So all told, I can tell you rough numbers, I'm looking at $600,000 for all three components of that, whether it's paid on premise updates, it's the intern program, or it's full-time staffing. The mix of those is about $600,000 in today's dollars. Um, based on our current projections that came from LifeQuest, I can probably mitigate half of that can't mitigate the other half of them. There's just no way. So it's going to be a matter of what we pick and choose to do for staffing purposes. So huh. this is the last slide. All right. So I talked to the mayor about a safer grant. Federal government offers staffing help to be able to provide new staffing. So that's one way we can mitigate and drive that impact over multiple years. Uh, so that is one option that we have uh, to write for. What that we're, what that does for us is new full-time staffing. It will not do anything for paid on-premise. It will do nothing for interns. Federal government only wants to pay to put actual full-time positions in place and not um, uh, imaginary positions with volunteers or interns that may or may not be filled depending on any given day. Um, revenue recovery. We're already doing that. I told you it takes us 45 minutes per call to, to do the, the documentation we need. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at the other mark for this year, but what I've gotten so far from LifeQuest, we're actually over our revenue target already. Um, I'm waiting for this month to come through. I wasn't going to put anything on paper until I see four months worth of, of revenue. We're actually over revenue for what our budget is. So revenue recovery is part of that. And if we put 62 in service more often and we catch more calls, we're going to be able to add to that revenue. But it's a matter of how much on any given year. And then you need more staffing, though, right? The staffing, the staffing I'm service. looking for is all I'm looking for, but with that we'll be able to capture more revenue, even if we do it in a uh, systematic way. So when I look at a more of a layered approach with a safer grant of being able to say, hey, we're going to get a safer grant and add revenue each year to be able to offset that so when it ends up at the end of the grant, the impact is not large on the levy. So again, I think over the, the four-year period of that, we can mitigate about half of what we're looking for. The other half... Um, I'll continue to work on other avenues, but I want to give everybody an early heads up. We talked about it last last year at budget time that we were going to try and get ahead of it staffing wise to give everybody a heads up. This is not a one year solution by any means. It's a multiple year solution. The immediate one's going to be that tenth position. I'll come back next month with hard data, hard numbers. I'd like you to meet with Mark and I about that first before you come back to council. Absolutely, I'm, I'm happy to do whatever you like. Um, but that's the end of my little presentation. I say I tried to keep it brief because I've been subject to death by PowerPoint way too many times. So <laughs> if, I'm happy to answer questions. Appreciate otherwise, that. you can throw stuff at me too if you want. So, Doug, did you have any? I was looking for something to throw at him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take down the screen so we can see if Elder yeah. Thomas has any questions? So we yeah. have. I'll uh, get him at the next public safety meeting. What sorry. I'm sorry, Kathy, we didn't hear you.
I said I'll get him at the next public safety meeting. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see because I think we need to sit down to numbers because the revenue is up a little bit, so the expenses, and I don't see the big income swing that we're talking about. So I think we need to kind of sit down and figure that out. We'll kind of look at those numbers tonight. Um, so I think we need to kind of figure that out. Okay. Absolutely. Doug, did you have something? Um, so we had, we had Medic 62, right? Yeah. So we do have, if we had staff, people to staff it, we could use it more. Yeah, we are. So as you can see in the annual report, we, we actually started using it for the first time this year as a second ambulance. Um, and as I have staff available, I staff it with whoever's available during the day. Uh, today I had an EMT on. If we would have had a second call, we would have taken it. Um, that's usually a couple days during the week. I usually have somebody. Um, but yes, we do use it as a second ambulance. And then remind, remind me, on mutual aid calls, do we have to... Do we get billed by the community? No. It's just basically we figure it all works out in the wash kind of approach? It does. Um, I've had some early conversations with uh, um, some of my cohorts, some of my, my colleagues in other departments. And um, the, the difficulty with mutual aid is that that handshake agreement of not being billed lasts until it starts becoming an impediment on their, or they're running more calls in our district than they are in their right. own district. So. Okay. Kathy, did you have anything else? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. Thanks. And we'll be sure we pass out these copies to the rest of the council when we get here. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the quarterly financial report. Uh, <coughs> yeah. So if you kind of just, this is just the first three months, so just start to kind of see the patterns and what's going on. Um, as you kind of wear, um, with the inflation, there's going to be some stuff there. They're going up. Um, it's the stuff that we kind of need to be uh, a little worried about, um, kind of watching over. But on page 49, it's kind of the general fund uh, revenues. Uh, the one uh, court uh, penalties and cost. Uh, it's only for January through February. Um, but it's one of those things. If you project it out, I think we're probably going to be about. If it stays on the same pattern, about 40000 under. Um, so we'll need to be watching those that number. Um, interest is down, too, on page 50. So that's another one um, we'll have to be kind of watching. Interest is down? Interest income? Yeah. Is, uh, well, it's not, not down. It's not below. trending below budget. OK. So. But based on what we were hearing you know, from Jeff earlier, the rates are supposed to be going. They are. I mean, if you look at what we're getting back from the banks, the rates are going up. So I'm hoping that it will eventually catch up. But, um, but I think we'll probably be a little short. Okay. Um, yeah. um, I'll go back to license and permits. Uh, we have some new staff um, who are who, uh, who taking the building permits, electrical permits, and plumbing permits. Um, I got to go back and reallocate some of that stuff because they were just billing it, the revenue just to the building permits. So some of that stuff is actually uh, electrical, plumbing, and HVAC. So we're going to go back and reallocate that. Um, the biggest one we just had was Walmart just went through for their big remodel um, just recently. Uh, page 51, you see a legal non-retainer. You notice that there's a, a negative balance, uh, just some refunds for overpayment for uh, uh, for the two cases we had last year. We were, uh, charged more than we were supposed to pay. So I made some notes on there. Um, page 53, uh, health health insurance retiree retired personnel. We do have three people uh, who are retired, um, so that use up that full 30000 a year end. We'll be budgeting. Um, I made little notes on there, what areas uh, kind of watch. Uh, just in general, you know, like fuel. Uh, I didn't mark on these, but all the fuel accounts will probably will be over um, at the end of the year. Um, uh, just in general, probably the next report will Kind of more detail on that. Uh, 
you kind of go to uh, page 65, uh, which is the rec fund. Um, I said see last page. I kind of want to hit this one because uh, a couple things are going on here for this on page 65. Um, one, you can see um, Grand Crossing revenue at uh, 48000 already. Um, so that's basically the ice rink. For the January, February, um, and through March, um, if you look at the expenses on page 66, and we did break out, you know, the part-time people who do work down there. And you have 20,000 uh, part-time wages already, and then the uh, uh, it's 116, it's like the fourth one down, 117, and then they have their own separate for expenses, um, second to the last one, about 14,000, so total 30, 34,000. Compared to revenues of 48, um, granted there's some administration time to be in there, so that has been very successful, as you can tell. But if you kind of go to page 87, because this those accounts are hard to figure out really what's going on. If you really want to look at it, um, page 87, um, as you can see, uh, the community center um, is right where it's supposed to be. I think for the rec department, I just kind of want to hit this one. As you notice, this is other revenues. Of 218,000 um, in the expenditures, 136. Uh, so basically, your revenue is coming in right now. Um, your, you know, your expenditures, 136. It's a, it's a doing really, really well. Um, that's, that, you know, so his revenues are already covering all the expenditures. Um, he'll be covering just what he has right now for, for a couple of months or so before they would even go into the property tax money. So. Um, very successful programs right there. Um, these are last year's. What's that? These are last last year's numbers. No, these are this year's for through March this year. Okay. Um, so the first three months um, with those numbers. Um, uh, page sixty-eight. Um, you know, kind of the. So the EMS fund, uh, as you see, the ambulance fees, uh, they're at 29% uh, um, of what, um, so far collection to date. Um, it should be, you know, 25% is uh, a good um, benchmark. So we're a little above that. Um, the thing on the other side, though, is the expenses that are up. Um, with that, for the service contracts, which relates to the collections of that, and then uh, more of the EMS expenses. So, uh, with that, so there's that. Uh, the wages part time, uh, third line down. Uh, in there is the EMS director, so we pay them up front. Uh, mm. Otherwise, you can see it's 2100 we're paying um, per month on that. Uh, not a lot of capital activity has happened through the capital funds. Um, the water and st storm, storm water um, is on target where they're supposed to be. That's all I have. Any questions? No, I mean, no, if they no, go no, grow, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. We'll have a better Thank idea. You. It's in the first couple months, you never really know what to do. Start getting now, so we'll have a better idea. Especially yeah. getting out of COVID and everything. Right, but it was, well, it didn't get you know, off in the inspection, the license and permits, and, yeah. you know, we've, that can be kind of volatile, and it's yeah. so there's I don't, there's no you know flashing red lights in it. No, no. the biggest thing that if you have all these projects do happen, you know those numbers will explode. Right. Uh, Alder Thomas, did you have any questions? No, oh, I'm fine, thank you. Okay. We've got a couple minutes left to do the bills. Mark, do you want to? Yeah, there's really not much activity. I mean, kind of covered a lot of that stuff that matches up um, some of the revenue and expenses. I didn't really have much. Uh, page 89, just want to hit on the Clean Lakes Alliances. We have that breakfast that we sponsor. That, that's in this. Um, included in there. It was budgeted for it. Um, Johnson Tree, Car or Tree Care, and page 91. They're, Taking down the ash trees currently. Uh, other than that, a lot of it's just 
everyday stuff. Oh, there's page 100. If you go to Gunta Law Office, I just want to let you know. Um, there is a claim for 21395 that actually was voided. Um, after we um, put the check in, we realized that we already had our amount. Um, and so we talked to them and we were told to void that check. So okay. that actually is a void check. So we reached, what is it going to be? We reached their maximum already. So oh, okay. It's yeah. be zero. It's be zero. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. That's everything? Yeah. Any questions? Is there a motion to accept the bills? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.